To get started, I am going to be using two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. You could also use lemon juice in place of the vinegar. I'm also going to be using a quarter cup of the juice from the cherries. Next, I'm going to be using the juice from the two cans of pineapple slices that I will be using. This made around a cup and a half of pineapple juice. By the way, I wanted to show you the particular brand of pineapple slices I'm using. The pineapple juice is 100% juice. Typically, they do sell pineapple slices and it's in a light syrup, which makes it sweeter and less acidic. And for that reason, this is real juice. I am going to be adding one full cup of light brown sugar. This is a packed cup. Now, if the, the pineapple slices were in light syrup, I might scale back on the brown sugar, but it needs it. I'm also going to be using a half cup of honey. And this is a local wildflower honey that lends a fantastic taste to this sauce. Okay, so I am also going to be using one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. You can adjust the cinnamon amount to the ratio of ingredients. You can add more or less. I think a teaspoon is a good amount. I'm also going to be using a half teaspoon of ground cloves. Again, you can adjust this. Some people don't like the taste of cloves. You can leave it out. I like it. And I also want to show you, just in case you don't have ground clove or ground cinnamon for whatever reason, you could also use a cinnamon stick and around 20 whole cloves and just allow them to steep and simmer in the sauce once you combine it. Okay. So now I'm going to show you here I have an almost 10 pound fully cooked bone in ham. And this is around 9.73 pounds. And the instructions that came with the ham says 15 to 20 minutes at 325 per pound. I'm gonna go around 15 minutes per pound when I cook this because it is fully cooked. You're basically warming it through. Okay, so first things first, I am basically going to combine all of the ingredients for the sauce in a saucepan and I want to warm it through just to warm through the dry spices and to dissolve the brown sugar into the sauce. I'm not really going to boil this and reduce it. It's just basically to warm it through to get things combined. So everything into the sauce pot. And again, I'm not going to bring this up to a simmer. I'm just warming it through to dissolve the brown sugar. I also want to mention that you could take an extra half cup of brown sugar and some honey and slather the, the ham and let it set. But I'll be honest, when I'm making a holiday meal, I kind of forget to do that step because all the focus mainly goes on the sides and the turkey. But that is something that you could do extra to get a better glaze onto your ham. But again, I'm just showing you what I actually do and honestly, I sometimes don't fuss with coating the ham because I'm always in a hurry. So this is pretty much my quick way of making my holiday ham. Be sure to check the description below this video for the ingredients and measurements used in this recipe. And I also like to place other links that you might find helpful as far as recipes and tips. Okay. So now that everything is mixed and combined and warmed through, the brown sugar has definitely dissolved in this sauce. I'm going to set it aside and now I'm going to prepare my ham. Okay, so here I have my pineapple slices. Those were two cans of pineapple slices. And here I have some cherries. I'm probably going to be using more cherries. And there's the beautiful ham. And also you will need toothpicks. And right now I'm fumbling with them, but yes, you're going to need a bunch of toothpicks. I'm eventually going to have to use more, I can tell already. So all I'm going to do now is score the exterior of the ham. And I actually like to sort of go in deep when scoring, it's more like cuts. I go in around a half inch and I'm just going to go down and then across diagonally. By the way, you probably want to do this on a cutting board so you're not hitting the tip of your knife on the sides of this pan. But you know, again, I'm always in a hurry and I don't have a lot of room in my kitchen. 
Okay, so once you're done scoring the ham, what I'm going to do is basically sort of open up these slits and this will allow just juices to get inside the ham as it bakes. Okay, so now I'm going to start putting on the pineapples and cherries all over the exterior of this ham. Okay, so my ham is ready. I have transferred it to a roasting pan. And for those of you that always like to know what type of pans that I use, I will put the link below this video and it'll take you to the type of pan that I'm using. This particular roasting pan does come with a lid and it holds up to 15 pounds. Okay, so now I'm just going to pour this glaze sauce all over the ham and this is basically what I will be basting this ham when I start baking it. I will be placing a lid and baking this. That'll help maintain the moisture in the ham. If you do not have this particular roasting pan, use what you have and just cover it with aluminum foil. Okay, so my ham is ready to start baking. Now, I have a couple of tips if you're making your ham at home. For a bone-in fully cooked ham, which is what I'm using today, I will be baking at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes per pound. For a fully cooked spiral cut ham, you wanna bake it also at 325 Fahrenheit for 10 minutes per pound. I will be basting this ham every 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, so this is after the first 30 minutes I want to show you. I'm going to baste it, but not much is going on. Obviously the ham will be releasing juices. And again, this ham is very salty and smoky. That is one of the reasons why if you're looking at anyone's glazed ham recipe, because I'm not the inventor of a pineapple glazed ham, they use a lot of sweet elements in the sauce because the ham is so salty. So you do want to add, don't be afraid to use that full cup of brown sugar. It's going to help balance out the saltiness of the ham and the addition of the vinegar and, or if you use lemon juice, that also helps balance out the sweetness and the saltiness. It all goes together. Okay, so again, after another 30 minutes, I'm still basting. If you have one of those little turkey squeezy basters that helps. I couldn't find mine. So again, this is after about an hour and a half. I'm still basting it um, every 30 minutes. I know this is a lot of work. There's probably easier ways to do this. I think I even made a ham in a bag, but if you just wanna go with the retro classic ham basting recipe, this is it. Now for the last 30 minutes of cook time, you want to remove the lid. I baste it twice in that last 30 minutes and here is the end result. Now, as you can see, this ham doesn't have that shiny, thick glaze on it. And if you do want to achieve that thick glaze, then you probably want to pat brown sugar and honey, put the honey first and then the brown sugar on the ham so it gets that extra coating of sweetness and glaze. But again, I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. I normally don't do that. If I do have time to do that, I'll do it, but for the most part, this is it and I can't complain because it's so delicious. Okay, I've transferred my ham to a cutting board and it's going to rest for 20 to 30 minutes because I don't wanna slice into it and juices run all over the place. So I'm gonna let it sit there for 20 to 30 minutes. Now with the rendered juices and the sauce we created, I'm going to put that into a saucepan just like this and I'm going to reduce it by a third. In the meantime, while it's doing that, I'm also going to skim off any fat that got in there from the ham, that was rendered from the ham. And that is going to be the delicious sauce that goes over my sliced ham. Okay, 
So this ham is rested. I have a container. I'm going to start placing the cherries and pineapples in that container because I'm not tossing those out. We like to eat those and I like to add it when I plate my sliced ham on a platter. Okay, so after slicing the ham that I'm going to need, I'm going to place it on a platter and I'm going to arrange it where I do the pineapple and cherries and then ham and then just intermittently on the platter. I think it looks nice. And then I'm just going to add the hot sauce all over the top. This sauce, I kept it simmering and this is actually a good way to reheat your ham from the kitchen to the table without actually reheating it because you don't want to dry it out so you keep the sauce hot okay so i definitely hope you guys give this recipe a try i hope you like it and thanks for watching